Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my preview of Crystal Palace vs Liverpool, the Premier League game that takes place this Saturday. We are just at the back end of the final international break of the season, the last one. We're now in the home stretch and Liverpool are in pole position now to finish in the top four. Well, I say pole position, they're in a good position. They are clear of Chelsea and Spurs, uh, albeit having played an extra game. They have FA Cup commitments. So, if we can get some points on the board against Palace, then absolutely wonderful. And that will obviously give us confidence going into the City games, which are the games that may well define the season up to now. As far as the international break is concerned, injury concerns. Um, Joe Gomez obviously limped off in the early stages against Holland for England, which obviously was just typical, it seems, of international breaks. Uh, Andrew Robertson bit up a knock for Scotland as well, which is probably the bigger concern, but I think he's going to be okay based on what I've read. Uh, Emre Chan and Dale Lovren also have had niggles recently um, and it remains to be seen whether they're going to be able to feature. I think Lovren has trained so he'll be fine. Emre Chan, they're still hopeful that he can make the Palace game but we won't want to take any risks, uh, especially with such important games on the horizon, not to mention the Merseyside derby. So we've got four or five players injured suddenly after having pretty much a fully fit squad. Nathaniel Klein is back though in full training and you know competing with Trent Alexander-Arnold now probably for that right back slot for the next couple of games. Will Klopp want to change it? Will Klopp want to reintroduce Nathaniel Klein at this most important part of the season? Maybe Palace is a good time to do that. Uh, but the Palace game isn't one that we should take it lightly. Yes, I know we've got City home and away in the Champions League. Yes, we've got Everton away as well. But this Palace game can really, really put some distance between us and the teams behind us. Uh, so if we can get the three points on Saturday, that'll be five points clear of Spurs and ten clear of Chelsea. We will have played a game more, uh, two games more rather, but they play each other on Sunday. So whichever team loses, um, you know, it's going to be a big gap, especially if it's Chelsea. If we can win and they lose, and that's 10 points between us and them, and we'll have only played one game more than them, and we have to go to the bridge. So uh, even if they win that game in hand, seven points um, with, with the fixtures we've got, they're quite kind to us, uh, and Chelsea have to face us as well. So you'd think we'd at least... Um, have a really good shot of finishing fourth there and obviously we should be looking at finishing even higher than that. United aren't out of reach and Spurs are pretty much there or thereabouts and both Chelsea and uh, Spurs have the FA Cup to worry about as well as far as the teams behind us are concerned. Forget about Arsenal, they will not be finishing in the top four. So Palace away, it's... Um it's a ground where, you know, it, it was a bogey ground for us for a few years. Obviously, they're memorable for 3-3 um, in 13-14, which uh, didn't help our title hopes. And then the following season, there was more heartbreak at 3-1 after Ricky Lambert scored early. Um, but since then, it's been okay. It's uh, Benteke's late penalty, um, a game I was at. I've got great memories from that game. And then last season, the 4-2. Uh, when we uh, just looked like we were going to score every time we went forward, it was great. Uh, so thankfully the, the hoodoo is, is over it seems with Palace away, although they did beat us um, at Anfield last season. Um, I think that's the last time we lost in the league at Anfield. So there's still a bit of, you know, a bit, and obviously the Roy Hodgson factor, so it's still a very competitive game, still a game we should be right up for. Um, we should not be looking ahead to Wednesday. It's a, it's a decent gap, it's not like it's a Sunday, Wednesday. It's a nice Saturday lunchtime before the Wednesday night game, so plenty of time for Liverpool to recover and I expect us to go as strong as we possibly can. Um, how strong we can go depends on the injuries, but I, I think as far as I'm concerned, I just don't want to be risking Emre Chan, I just don't see the point. And same with Dan Lovren, like if, if they've been having niggles, um, let's leave them out. I think Robertson probably will play, I don't think his his problem is, is very serious at all. Um, I wouldn't. You know, Trent or Klein is a, is a tricky one. Klein is in the Champions League squad, so he's an option for Wednesday. But, uh, you know, do you want, really want to be getting out to match fitness um, using that game as, as, as his game to do that? But then again, do you want Trent to be playing uh, all the games? It's tough. It's obviously, this is a very tough four game period to pick players from this uh, Palace. Everton away in the league and City home and away. So, if I'm going to have a go at predicting a starting 11 for Palace. Obviously, Loris Karras to play in goal. I mean, even and when he comes to right back, it's tough. Um, I think we should. Uh, I think we should give Klein a game here. Uh, maybe give Klein both the league games and give Trent both the uh, both the Champions League games. You know, it's um, going to be so tough for Trent <laughs> against Leroy Sané um, for City, and you know, m maybe Klein is the right choice for that. But is Klein ready for? 
for that sort of test when he hasn't played a single game this season. So that's a big, big call for Klopp to make. I wouldn't want to be making that decision, but I think, you know, if I had to go one way or the other, I think I'd go Trent for the City games and then Klein for the league games, maybe. Um, but, you know, feel free to disagree with me. Uh, at the back, I think Matip and Van Dijk, just because Lovren got his knock and, you know, his confidence might be slightly knocked after United away and... Um, Maybe Matip's just the better option here and throughout this period. I don't want the back four to be messed with too much throughout these four games. They've got to keep that sense of solidarity and unity, which they, they've had pretty much for the last couple of months uh, since the disappointment against Swansea and West Brom. I think we defended quite well on the whole, um, no matter who's been partnering Van Dijk and no matter who's been at right back. So that's promising. Robertson at left back, providing he's OK. Uh, Henderson, I think, should play in the six. Um, so there's no reason to, to risk Chan. Let's save him for the big games against City. Ahead of Henderson, um, lalana has been getting some minutes under his belt. I think this might be a good chance to see him start. Uh, and let's, uh, let's go with Wijnaldum as well. I think Henderson, Wijnaldum, Lallana will be just fine for these. And then the front three should not remain, uh, should not be changed. I think the front three will be the front three, Mane, Salah, Firmino for the Palace game and for the City game and then maybe for Everton we'll throw Danny Ings in or Dominic Slanky in um, because we'll know where we stand with City and you know all, all eyes will be as, as, as bizarre as it sounds to say the, the priority will be the City games at that point but we've got to get three points on the board against Palace and against Everton of course but let's get them on the board against Palace see where we are by the time the Everton game comes around but it's very much a block of four games that Klopp will be thinking about um, thinking ahead a lot about because they're, they're all in the space of 10 days and you know g God knows what situation we could be in after them but two, two away games in the league and obviously no away games are a gimme and we could be absolutely anywhere in relation to the top four by then because anyone could win between Chelsea and Spurs uh, United have got Swansea at home this week so they should probably se se secure that second place for the time being um, Arsenal you know we're not worried about them but they are playing Stoke so we expect everyone else to pick up points uh, besides Chelsea and Spurs, who that's going to be a really interesting game on Sunday. So, prediction-wise, you know, I think provided we go as strong as I as I think we will, which is pretty much full strength, uh, it's going to be tough. I mean, Palace have played with injuries, particularly in defence. Um, so, I mean, you know, as long as we as long as we keep our heads, as long as we're patient, I imagine we're going to have all of the ball. Um, I think we should be able to pick them off. Um, you know, it's going to be great to get one over Roy Hodgson if we can. Um, so yeah, I am picking us to win this. I don't think it's going to be as convincing as recent w wins have been, or as comfortable as as like, like Newcastle. Even though it wasn't a, a rout, it was comfortable. Um, and Watford was just was just so so easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna back us to win. Obviously, um, vote for who you think is gonna win, or whether you think it's gonna be a draw, Palace draw, or Liverpool win. I'm gonna go for a two 0 Liverpool win. Nothing too sensational. I think we might. If we get a lead, start bringing players off on sort of 60 minutes, you know. If we do have that nice cushion there, we can rest the likes of Firmino, Salah and whoever we see fit. So, And then it's all eyes on the big one on Wednesday, um, which, you know, I mean, I'm not actually looking past Palace. Uh, I'm not looking past it. Whereas, you know, before that, the home games against Watford and Newcastle, uh, I was kind of looking past them, thinking about the draw or the, or, or the City games or whatever we had ahead of us. But now I'm fully focused on Palace and we'll worry about City when we get to it. And boy, will we worry about it when we get to it. But that's my predictions, that's my thoughts, that's my preview. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, do subscribe if you're new to the channel and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook, of course. Leave a comment uh, with your predictions for this game. Uh, drop a like, please. That would really, really be appreciated. And I'll see you soon.